You know, what bothers me the most, Denise, is that an artist like you that's touching millions of people, millions of people, right, on Spotify and on TikTok, sure, they're your followers, but you don't own that data. No. You can't remarket to them. I can't get to them. You can't really touch them as a business owner. How 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 frustrating. It's extremely frustrating, right? especially with Leave Me, right? I dropped the song six weeks ago. Yeah. This is the song that millions of people, literally yeah. millions of people clamored for, right. right? And for reasons outside of my control, I couldn't release it when they wanted it. Mm -hmm. And by the time I could release it, I had lost access to them. Yeah. So now this song is yeah. out and I can't get it to them. Yeah. It's so fucking frustrating. frustrating. It stars the foundation, the precedence. We flying flags in every city, global residence. And we killing off the masters. Ghetto slave driving bastards. We making hits faster than you could think. We're on the brink of revolution. All my indie music makers, here's your restitution. Uh, we got the game in a chokehold. Not paying the creators is a no-no. I got the smoke road for all the fam bam. Welcome to the Pay the Creators podcast. I'm your host, the CEO of B-Stars, A Batch On. And today, today, I'm with a real, real special guest. Someone that I've had the luxury of watching ascend into the universe of music for a few years now, since day one. This dude is a visionary, an entrepreneur, a cultivator of love, and he's currently rolling around the United States on a sold out tour, melting the hearts of every couple around the United <laughs> States. I'm so proud. Well, he's also a number one internationally charting artist. Come on now, come on now. <laughs> he's making history. He's changing the landscape of what music sounds like and bending what music does in people's lives. I'm so proud to have this guy. Anise, welcome to the podcast, baby. Thank you for having me, brother. I appreciate you I'm coming. I'm honored to be here with you. And I, I always say it's an honor whenever I feature on any, on any podcast or, or uh, publication, but this is genuinely a deeper honor because you have been from day one in my corner. Um, and I've known you since before I was an artist. So this is very full circle. Man, I'm, I'm so proud of you. Thank you. And not just me and um, the community especially our people, mm -hmm. the Palestinian mm -hmm. community. Um, we don't have a lot of representation and we don't get to see what our people can do. And you're, you're, making, you're making us all super proud. And you're, you, representing, you're representing our people amazing. Thank you, thank you. Well, we need that representation. Yeah, man. You know? and, and from day one, the Palestinian community had my back. You know? So it's, it's, I'm, I'm able to represent because they elevated, so. For sure. For sure. Man, okay. Full circle. We're here in Austin, Texas. Yes, sir. Um, we got to give the people a little bit of a, like a backdrop, a story. For we sure. we got we got to we got to let the people know, you know, it, people have seen you, you know, ascend on TikTok and you've entered the the hearts of so many people, but we got to we got to got to we got to get we got to go back. We yeah, it's some story time. Early, 100%. Early. We got to go early. I want <laughs> you to kind of just introduce yourself um for those that don't know who you mm. are. And and give us a little bit of a high level journey from your early days as a child and mm. and to where we are today. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Should I look at any of these cameras? That's you right there. This one. Okay. <laughs> um yeah, I mean the story times everything. I think everybody's life story um is the precursor to their art, you know? And so for me, growing up, um, not pursuing music at all, but always being surrounded by music. My my parents were always playing music in the house, mm. you know, and music of all different varieties. Uh, you know, ranging from uh, Jim Croce and James Taylor to the Gypsy Kings to Lauren Hill to Nina Simone. To, you know, it's just there was just a wide range um, of music. And I think I was always sort of steeped in it, even if I didn't realize it at the time. And so I, um, I never pursued music in, in school, went to college, studied philosophy, went to law school became a lawyer. Um, and this is right around the time when I met you. <clears throat> um, although I had no, although, yeah, 2018, yeah. although I had known you since I was a kid, but I had known of you. Um, but yeah, right around 2018 or yeah, 2018, 2017, mm -hmm. I finished law school, uh, became a lawyer and I was at my lowest point. 
I was depressed. And it's funny because like I think a lot of people th- expected that okay I'm like a I'm like a brown person who became a lawyer like it must have been the the family pressure it must have been the traditional cult no it wasn't for me actually my family's quite like open minded and yeah. <clears throat> there was never a pressure from from within the house to be a lawyer or to pursue the traditional fields I just was limiting myself I had sort of jumped into the box that I felt other people wanted me to stay in. And I think a lot of people do that. I think yeah. in many ways, um, that is the norm, unfortunately. We're we, all we're always in discovery mode. Yes. We're always in discovery mode. Yes. And it, there's no there's no time period on when that discovery moment happens. You no, know what I mean? no, so it's, it's just a, you could be a fifty year old artist that, and it's like, oh yep. Yeah, hundred percent. And thank God, I thank God every day that I figured it out pretty young, you know. Uh, yeah, I could have been one of those artists that at 18 was like, I know that this is what I'm about. That wasn't meant for me. That wasn't God's will for me. That wasn't the plan for me. So, so got to my up, lowest growing point. Growing up in, in the East Coast. Yes, yeah, sir. D.C. area, mm-hmm. Virginia, Northern mm-hmm. Virginia. Um, pretty, uh, pretty comfortable childhood, but at the same time, like a, an interesting childhood, right? Like my dad, um, his family has been here for four generations. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mom's family has been here for maybe 40 years. And so um, my dad and mom were living in D.C. because my dad's a, uh immigration attorney, but at the time he was doing civil rights law. Mm-hmm. So I think I was always sort of, as a kid, my most formative sort of memories, those fleeting core memories are like driving to and from, uh, you know, like civil rights um, uh, conventions. And, um, and I think I'm very blessed based on how I grew up. We, I, was, I was raised in an area of diversity. I was raised in an area of diverse, not just ethnicity, but diverse ways of thinking, mm-hmm. um, diverse approaches to life. And that probably, looking back on it, um, shaped the way that I think, and both as a human, but also as a songwriter, to be able to understand different, um, the differences in life, understand that life is not just what I've experienced, but what other people have experienced. Um, and I think... In some ways, hopefully that's played out in my music because, I mean, we were talking about this before we sat down today, but yeah, there's a pretty diverse crowd that comes to my shows. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if there's a connection between the fact that I was raised amongst... um, Humanitarians. You know what I'm saying? Humanitarians, exactly. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of humanity at these shows. Mm -hmm. Um, It's all kind of full circle. Everything is full circle. Everything sort of... um, cycles back to the to the to the theme yeah and so yeah man raised in in that area very blessed um you know my parents are are good people raised me up going to going to church every sunday so i i'm a very spiritual person um but i do think that um this tour has this tour and the last tour have still um sort of unpackaged my mind Mm. to see the world because i haven't seen some of these cities we're going to so i was raised in a diverse area but we're we're figuring out a whole yeah. different uh, h- how the world looks right now. Yeah, and just just being open to your calling where, wherever wherever it may call you. you yeah, know, just being open to those experiences. Like I think when you when you talk about your dad being an immigration attorney, and then your mom also being very active in terms of the humanitarian stuff as well, and your sister and your family, and um, you know indirectly you're you're paying it forward with your music the same Trying the same to. same way you know it's like it was always you know i i just you know and, and i know your family and they you know everything they do is about about love there's purpose in it they're, yeah. they're trying to serve somebody yeah they're trying to serve something yep and um and when i hear your music and when i first heard your music i was like oh this dude <laughs> this dude's intentional he's special he's it's intentional about the message he's he's not this is not about just superstardom or, or no. i mean if it comes it comes that's great because we yeah. need that we need met that message to to reach right. a, a global audience but it's never the goal but it's just touching people it's intentional it's touching people and you you, you heard your calling and you you went with it and so many people ignore that ignore those signs you know yeah um even with me like i i i felt that early in my career right and you said you you kind of you know familiar maybe with my music early on of course and i had to kill my dreams you know, I had to kill drink because, you know, at the time when, when I was trying to pursue music, the music industry was a graveyard. It yeah. was piracy. No one was, you know, you know, you had to, we're selling CDs out the trunk, you yeah. know, we're city to city. And to make a living doing this, um, it was, was tough. And 
the channels that you guys have available to you today it's crazy. to speak to your audience <laughs> and directly connect with them in the way that you have connected with them is just such a blessing. It's the only reason why this is possible, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. you um you make a great point. I, I'm currently, as a upcoming artist, in the most fortuitous position you could possibly be in, um, both with social media and the way you can distribute music now and the way that an independent artist such as myself can truly be independent, you know, and truly not just be independent, but thrive independently. Um, and a lot of what you do <clears throat> is um, sort of making the landscape possible for those sort of pioneering artists. And you've created that that um, access, I would say, for artists like myself and other independent artists, like the ones that you've had um, and have sat right here and the ones that will sit right here. But but I appreciate, I appreciate what you said, man. And honestly, I think everything is about being a servant. You know, yeah. I think we don't, in, you know, growing up watching movies, the, that's not what gets glorified is the servant leadership, the servant mentality. Yeah, for sure. um, that's not really what you, per, you perceive as the sort of quote unquote main character mm -hmm. that we glamorize in, um, in pop culture. But um, I think I always had that example of servant leadership in my home. Yeah. My, my parents, my sisters, uh, my brother, everybody finds a way to, to serve. Yeah. And for me, I think that I found that the best way to serve is to do it um, in the way based on my skill set is to do it in the way that calls to people's hearts the most. And I think music is the easiest um, way to call to someone's heart. I think music is the sweetest song, no pun intended. Music is like the sweetest, um, it's like honey. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You can attract more, more bees with honey than vinegar. And I think I'm trying to sort of uh, serve globalistically. I'm trying to yeah. attract as many people as possible, not just preach to the crowd that already understands what I'm saying mm -hmm. or sing to the choir that already feels the same sentiment that I do. Um, I want to serve in a much more expansive, men, you know, uh, much more expansive demographic, mm -hmm. which to me, I don't want any demographic. I want it all. I want every single person um, that could possibly relate to what I'm saying yeah. to have access to it, to relate to it. Um, but it does come from the inspiration I see before me. Uh, not just my family, people like you, man. People who have shown um, across decades that they will serve those they love and they will serve those that they don't even know. Mm. They will serve those that need their service and they'll serve those who don't want it. So um, as an artist, that's sort of the duty. You know, we, we, music is the universal language. So if I could speak to the whole world um, and speak a message of love, like you said, in this day and age, the digital age, with access to things such as beat stars, I'm golden. You know what I'm saying? But it's not just love. And I love that, you know, you when you you're you're transparent and you're open about talking about, you know, your depression um that you endured prior to yeah. on this journey. And probably find find elements of it throughout, you know, throughout your journey today. Like we're we're human. You yeah, know? of course. But you also address pain and you also address the complexities of relationships. Mm. And it's not just um, roses all the time. <laughs> no. It's just not just roses all the time. Yeah, you know, and it's important for people to know that um, this this journey is you know is not perfect. It's not no. it's not always laid out. But I think we give up on things too easy. Yeah, right. We give up on things too easy. When it gets hard, we give up. Especially this generation today. Yeah, this younger generation. We once it gets a little rough, we fucking tap hide out. into it's our time to tap yeah, out. We hide into our corner. Yeah, and it's important for artists like you to um, continue having these, these songs, these lyrics, these messages, these stories of the ups, the downs, the triumph, yeah. the destruction sometimes. Sometimes you gotta destroy yourself. <laughs> life is balance. Yeah. You need it all. And I don't think we have a choice. Mm -hmm. I think life throws balance at you. The highs, the lows, the peaks, the valleys, the love, the sorrow. Um, and you're correct that I think in this day and age, we're so used to immediate gratification mm -hmm. that a little bit of pressure, a little bit of sorrow, a little bit, of, a little bit of valley, really um, is tough for the youth. Yeah, but I do believe in the human spirit of resilience, and I do believe that no matter whether it's this generation, our generation, the generation before us, and the generation before them, I I believe everybody um, that is a human has that resilience in them. Sure. And um, so, if I can be honest and vulnerable about that in my music, 
Yeah, that's wonderful. And like you said, it's not just love. You know, mm-hmm. it's not just sun and moon. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like a song like Leave Me is yeah. me being honest, being mm-hmm. vulnerable, mm-hmm. admitting something and hoping that the listener will then, I'm, I'm, I might grant them permission. You know what I'm saying? Because some people need someone else to give them permission to be like, you know what? I'm going to be vulnerable. Mm-hmm. I'm going to admit it. I'm going to look inside myself because it's hard. It's hard to do that. Nobody wants For to sure. do that. For sure. I'm a work in progress. Yeah. I'm a work in progress. And, and, and you know, I think that, you know, you've, when we say that young generation, once it gets, once it gets kind of tough, they, even though that resilience is in us and sometimes we're not, we're not taught, we're not taught to overcome. Um, nowadays, like I can't wait for fucked up shit to happen. Let's go. Life. You know what I mean? Like I can't <laughs> wait. I can't wait for fucked up shit to happen because getting comfortable is a really bad place for human beings. Yeah. And um, I can't wait to find the next challenge. And I can't wait to, 2000%. you know, and, but I wasn't always like that. No. I wasn't always like that. Things, and I'm sure you have experienced that too. 100%. I think the best things happen to you, uh, the best things that happen to you are the ones you don't want. Mm. When we, cause we, I think for myself, uh, when I was younger, I always wanted what I envisioned. I wanted what I wanted. Mm. And when I didn't get what I wanted, it was time to be pissed. Mm. It was time to be upset. It was time to be sad. Um, but I think life has sort of humbled me in a way to understand that I have no clue what I need. I have no clue what I need. And life knows what I need. You know, the universe knows what I need. In my opinion, in my, in my beliefs that God knows what I need. And so to not get what you want probably means you're getting what you need. Um, and I'm with you, man. That, that's when we grow. Mm-hmm. That's definitely when we grow. Yeah. And then the throw on top of it is like this, the stereotype of being an Arab American and, and like the stereotypes of like music, some, some families and some, some, maybe your family wasn't like that. I mean, but my, a lot luckily, of families are different. Luckily my family was open to it too, right? They still don't even know what the hell I'm doing, <laughs> but, but it's, you know, it's kind of frowned upon, you know, it's kind of frowned upon. And so that, that stigma, that stigma yeah. we have to kind of overcome. And, you know, when, when I was out there performing and me making music, like, Dude, I would I would get so much hate. Yeah. So much hate. Like, hey, you're cursing in your music. That's hot on. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. The, like the you hot know, on police came for you, bro. <laughs> they, came for me. <laughs> they did, they did. And it's like, I love that, you know, our people um are growing up. Yeah. And we're being accepted. We're being accepting of but our that's children. That's because of you. No. That's because no, bro, it is because of you. It's because of you and the and the artists like you who came before artists like me that broke we the mold. Shit. Somebody had, come on, bro. Y'all <laughs> ate shit so we could eat a little bit less shit. So yeah. the next generation doesn't have to eat shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? You right. broke the mold, you know? Um, we couldn't be ourselves. You know? We couldn't be ourselves. But but artists like you, Offendum, Narcy, artists who, yeah. who came through as uh, you know, Arab Americans or just um your generation who who um defied the convention, mm-hmm. defied the norm, defied the tradition, and followed their hearts, which is really what every parent should be proud of their child for doing. Right. It's fo- when, when you follow your heart, you are a success. That is literally sure. the definition of success. Sure. Whether or not you make $10 million or you're broke, mm-hmm. if you followed your heart, you did what you were called to do on this planet. In my opinion, that is success, and I think every parent should see it that way too. Um, yeah. And y'all did that. Mm-hmm. So then for an artist like me, who's a little bit younger, um, but not as young as some of these artists coming up yeah, behind me sure. um, that sort of granted me permission. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then for me to come out and do what I'm doing um, in, a, in a music landscape that's much more friendly than what you had to deal with, um, it hopefully gives even more permission to a 17-year-old right. or a 19-year-old right. who's looking up and thinking, I want to do this. And anytime I talk to a kid, no matter what their racial background is, um, and they want to pursue music or they want to pursue the arts, I tell them, do it. Mm-hmm. Do it. Just mm-hmm. just do your best. Do your best. Do it. Write a million shitty songs. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what it takes before you write one decent one. Um, but just follow your heart till the end. Because you'll find that even if artistry and the in the way you thought being the artist, being the performer, right. isn't what your calling is, you'll find what was your calling. You'll find you'll go through that artist phase um into something that you're meant to do. Or or you'll be an artist forever. Yeah. But whatever it is, when you follow your heart, you sort of find the, you find the, um, the promised land for you. Yeah. And I think um, when we, we were first talking back in like 2018, I remember um, you telling me about your production company with you and Isa. Yeah, my boy right there. And, Shout out East. And it was like, I think I, I was hitting you guys up. We were doing an event. We're doing an, uh, um, an event in Maryland. I think you guys were booked doing a wedding or something. We were in Philly in a hostel was, film, filming a marathon. Yeah, doing something. But, <laughs> but I think... 
I kind of went through that when I first kind of started Beat Stars. Was yeah. like, I need to find something related to the music, to yep. me, the media, something for me to kind of um, release that creative energy, right? Yes. And um, I found fulfillment in it. Mm -hmm. I found fulfillment in it, telling, helping other people tell their stories. And you were, you were kind of doing that too with, with video, right? Helping other 100%. people tell their stories and you found fulfillment in that. And it taught you, it taught you kind of like the, you know, the landscape of creation. Yes. But it also catapult, catapulted you into being able to be this independent artist that knows how to narrate his own story with yeah. the, with the help of collaborators, collaborating yeah. with other, with other people. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of artists when they don't when they put out that first song and they don't see that first success and they're they're heartbroken. It's time to quit. Right. <laughs> but you know, tell me a little bit about being that behind the scenes person working mm. on the production stuff, dabbling a little bit in that prior to mm. like really like really going full force recording your music, getting getting your songs out there. Did did was there any other things like that that helped form? Oh, for sure what everything, you're doing today everything that i did mm -hmm. prior to artistry formed my artistry uh owning a media company delivering pizzas becoming a lawyer working at summer camp um all of it all of it in one way shape or form built a certain part of anise who n you now know as the artist right my um summer camp days taught me how to serve people taught me how to um, mm. taught me how to live a life of service and a life of stewardship, right? Which now I believe I'm doing as an artist. And I think I, there's no way I'd be doing it at this level without working at summer camp. It's this, what I'm doing right now is the same thing as summer camp, mm. which is why the tour is called summer mm -hmm. camp. Mm -hmm. I'm not even trying to hide it. Um, yeah. my pizza delivery days taught me everything about hustle and perseverance. I mean, I delivered pizzas on and off for 10 years. Um, in the cold, in the hot, no matter what, in high school, in yeah. college, in law school, as a barred attorney, still delivering pizzas. Um, that's sort of where my dog mentality, mm. you know, crystallized. You know, if, if you can deliver pizzas for 10 straight years, you can make it in this music industry. I promise you that. If, <laughs> if, you, if you don't quit Domino's after 10 years. Um, yeah. But I loved it. I loved it. I loved the grind. Yeah. The only difference is that grind uh, was never going to get, give me a platform I needed like this grind. Yeah. Um, law school taught me a lot of things, taught me how the world works, taught me how to navigate sort of the the industries, mm. taught me how to navigate people who don't necessarily share your same interests, um, taught me how to pres preserve my own interests and protect myself. Um, and then owning a media company, like you said, taught me how to tell stories, mm -hmm. you know, helped me understand more the value of video, the value of media to an artist, especially an independent artist, right? Because you see these major label artists <clears throat> that, um, you and know, putting yourself in the in the seat of the viewer, having to understand it yeah. as the consumer, mm -hmm. because these major label artists have when they film a music video, there's a whole there's a whole team, there's a whole and there's a massive budget, and so um, not to take anything away from them, mm -hmm. but they don't have to wear as many hats as I do. Yeah. They don't have to wear as many hats as an independent artist does. I have to think, sure. me and my team, small team, have to think of everything from you know, um, a treatment to the direction, to the editing, to the setting, to right. the wardrobe, to the lighting, to the, all of it, yeah. all of it. All those small things you don't think make a difference or you wouldn't even think to think of right. if you had never worked in media, right? Um, and as a business owner, as a business owner, how can you, delegate and scale your business yeah that's without the... <laughs> experiencing those those all of those activities early on in the creation and like or like when i when i first started beat stars i yeah. was customer support i was yeah. answering the phones <laughs> I, I was product I, Bro, was... I used to be mailing out every single sticker yeah everything you know you know, I, mailed, I mailed out cds every with people. single one of them to, bro, with know. a handwritten letter yeah but it's like you said learning to scale is yeah. ever yeah. ever um it's a constant learning process yeah i'm still learning how to scale right just on this tour alone for the first time we have a tour manager mm -hmm. for the first time we have someone running my social media mm -hmm. with me rather yeah. than having um it, previously one person wore two of those hats and another person wore the other two now we got four people yeah. wearing one hat yeah. each um and that's how you scale you know where i i i made mistakes early on in my career in at beat stars is 
as pal, you know, as being an Arab, Arab, Arab American and Palestinian, we're, we're like, oh, if you're in our home, like my employees or team members, like if you're in our home, you know, you're family, right? Yeah, yeah. And you're forgiven of, of everything. And Do whatever ex- you want. And the expectations <laughs> or whatever, you're home, right? And um, in business, that's a recipe for disaster. Not everybody knows how to be family. And, um, and I think I started out trying to befriend every single person mm. that we were, and I forgot about the goal. Yeah. Which was trying to liberate music worldwide. Mm. Was trying to like you like how we with your with your with your video trying to to have people tell stories. I, I wanted to scale people yeah. telling stories, millions of, millions of songs all around the and world, you have. and express and express it. But in the early days, it's like you know when you when I, I'm high school dropout. I I, I didn't go to no management school or college or anything like that. I didn't understand. I didn't work in no big organization, so it was hard for me to understand what it meant to hold teammates accountable mm. and set expectations and then also inspire them towards the goals that we're trying to achieve. Mm. And um, you're starting this journey now where you're having teammates and a lot of them are in yeah. this room and they're probably going to hear what you're going to say. But um, as the CEO, right, as the entrepreneur, the one that's inspiring this goal, that's setting these these metrics in place to achieve what we need to do to, to continue scaling this love, this yes. emotion to worldwide, yes. right? Um, how do you balance, you know, building and scaling that team with friends and family and team members that maybe have never been part of your your journey? Because I think a lot of a lot of independent artists they need to hear this. They because, do because be, because this is not an easy question to no, answer. No, and, and I think this is where a lot of independent artists they fail. Fail. This is the critical mm-hmm. error. Mm-hmm. You know, where where they have a friend on the team um, that they trust, and that friend fucks them over. Or they have a friend on the team that they trust and they don't fuck them over, but they can't get the job done. They're not, not skillful. And they're they loyal to yeah, that person right. to a fault, and then their business fails. Mm-hmm. Or they don't work with friends. They work with people who they can't trust, mm-hmm. who get the job done, but um, ultimately don't align with them. Yeah. I think when it comes so to- So how do you choose? Yeah. How do you choose the right person for the right job, for the right skill, for the right, you know, it's, it's, it's tough. So I think it all depends on the artist, right? It all depends on what, what's your movement. What's your goal? Where are you scaling to? What are your needs? Every artist shares similar needs. You need manager. You need uh, media. You need production. You ne- if you're doing live, you need certain. Um, you know, you need live support. You need maybe a guitar player, a bass player, a, a drummer. You might have different needs depending on what genre you're in, and what your goals are, and what your and honestly what your budget is. But um, I do think that it. I like to look at music. As the CEO, this is me with my CEO hat on, mm-hmm. as a business, mm-hmm. right? And as a business, you have to think about what, what are your business principles, mm-hmm. right? So is it, we just want to make as much money as possible? Is it, we just want to be the most famous uh, independent team on, on the planet? Mm-hmm. I uh, believe in a certain way of doing business that's a little bit more non-traditional. Um, so there's this, um, there's this, uh, business model, I would mm-hmm. call it, <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, that we use <clears throat> that's a little bit more non-traditional. And it's where you build out your team and you have a certain system for accountability. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is where this is where you, um, what I'm trying to get at is process mm-hmm. matters. For sure. Process matters. When you start putting people before process, your business will get fucked, mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really hard for a lot of independent artists to understand because if you're independent, it probably means that you're a grinder. Probably means you're loyal. Mm-hmm. Probably means you ride for your people. Mm-hmm. But what you have to remember is <clears throat> your goal needs to be bigger than um, the limitations of your personal perspective. You need to be able to put the process before the people to serve the people. Yeah. So <clears throat> I think independent artists need process. I think it's tough because a lot of, you know, everyone's always saying, go get a team, go get a team, go get a yeah. team. Like get your, Man, it's easy, easier said than done. But I think having having and it, I could see it within the team that you have. Everyone's passionate. Everyone's aligned, and everyone's along with supporting the journey and wanting to see you succeed. And what? I think if you if you start at a baseline there, and then you build in the processes um, yeah. on top of that, you'll have success. And that's the kind of the success you're seeing today. But yeah. at first, it starts with the creative process. Before all of this comes into action, before these tours and these albums and these releases, it's as artists, um, you know, sometimes we're, you know, introverts, you know, mm-hmm. sometimes we're, 
we're, we're fucking weird. We're fucking weird. <laughs> we there's something be, wrong we with us. Be. There's something wrong with us. And in a good way. Crazy in a good way. Yeah. But inspiration will hit us at different moments, at yeah. different times. Yeah. And we need to release it. We need to write it down. We need to express it. We have to. We can't bottle up creativity. Mm. And um, just like just like, you know, you've enabled um, a lens into your world of creativity with your fans inside of your car. Yeah. Turning on that camera, welcoming them into the journey, into the the, the flawed versions of the the yeah. music, oh. like all all of it, like from the ex the the immediately brand new versions. Mm -hmm. Every song that they've heard, they've heard. Leave me. Yeah. The first time I, I ever it sang time it. Ago. Yeah, the first time I ever sang yeah, it, you yeah, heard it. Yeah. And you could go back, it's still on my Instagram. You don't yeah. have to like, it's not like I deleted it because I'm like, nah, that sound like shit. Right. Nah, that's the process, mm. right? Um, feedback. Feedback, and also I think narrative, right? I like for people to see, if you find me today, you find Leave Me on a big playlist or something, you could go back, better yet, Not to, this is not a flex at all, when Kim Kardashian shared Leave Me, mm -hmm. right? Everyone's yeah. freaking out, right? Yeah. The coolest thing for me is that the biggest celebrity on Instagram just shared it. But if you go back deep enough on my page, you'll find the first time that I ever even came up with it. You'll find the freestyle that it was. Right. I'm not hiding that. <laughs> I'm not hiding the process. Um, process even before myself, yeah. right? I want you to see the neophyte stage of that song. Mm -hmm. I want you to watch me build it and crystallize it over live stream, over a series of different posts. I was in the car with the homies the other day on the, on, we had a long drive. We had a lot of music to listen to. So I said, fuck it, let's go through my Instagram. Mm -hmm. And I started playing like these most like early demo phases of some of these songs that are now out that they now play on stage, right? right? And I think it was cool for them. And I, I heard a lot of feedback in the car I think they were like, holy shit, this is what that song used to sound like? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, this is dope. Or, oh, I see how you switched yeah, that. Man. Or I see how you took this from that song and put it into that song. Um, yeah. I think whether it's my band or the world at large, as an artist, especially independent artist, welcoming people into your process allows people to be a part of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And that's when people are invested. They're not invested because you have a blue check. They're not invested because you have a million followers. They're not invested because you um, have any number of... Mm -hmm this, that, or clout, they're invested when you invite them into your process. Um, and that, for me, is fun. And they can value you even during your imperfect days. Yeah. Even when the concepts are not fully formed. Yeah. And there's, you know, I think we, we social media can be very, very cruel sometimes where <laughs> it's like every, every post has to be perfection. Yeah. Everything has to be like fully thought out and perfect. Um, and, and I, and then when an imperfect things hap thing happens, your fans are there to forgive you and hold you back and lift you mm. back up. Mm. So when you, when you, your fans were mad at you recently yeah, yeah. about the release date yep. of leave me because it was inconsistent on yep. when it was going to come out, but they forgave you. Yes. The and real they, ones do the real ones. And they supported you because you were always, welcoming them into the imperfect process yeah even when it means giving them uh even when it means making a mistake mm -hmm. and i think um you know you never make this you never make a mistake as an artist you don't make the mistake mm -hmm. intentionally yeah you were not out here sure. we're not out here trying to mislead people but things do happen mm -hmm. and i think a lot of people forget that as artists we're human yeah we have goals we have visions and sometimes they don't play out the way we want them to yeah. and that hurts for us yeah um, but it, we don't, it, it, I don't want to cut you off, but it reminded me of a moment back in 20, 2018 it was the end of 2018. We had a like horrific event happen at BeatStars. Mm. We were getting hacked by some, some, some people in a, I think I remember this. We were getting hacked by some, it was some malicious folks out in a different country. Right. And, um, it was scary. Yeah. It was the, one of the most scariest moments, um, in the history of the company. I still get PTSD thinking about it. And BeatStar as a company was at a, at, a, at a point where I thought- It was a breaking point. It was done. I thought yeah. we, we couldn't figure out, someone had put in like a Trojan horse piece of code mm -hmm. that was trying to delete all of the music on the platform. Yeah. And we couldn't, we couldn't find it. It was like a needle in a haystack and millions and millions of lines of code. And, and we're like, we're done, it's over. We're, we're, our community is never going to come back. They're going to abandon us. But they had your back. Dude. They rode for you. I went on Because you I, rode for them. I went on live. I went on Periscope. We were down for three days. Periscope, man. 72, 72 hours. I went on Periscope, IG Live, wherever, wherever that was live. And, and, I, and I 
it was one of those moments. It was like, I felt like it was God talking to me. Mm. He's like, go talk to your people and be real with them and yeah. be honest with them yeah. and give them the fucking truth. And, and I think that video somewhere is still, still on there. And I'm literally in tears. My son's in surgery. My, my wife's husband, I mean, my wife's dad, my wife's husband. <laughs> she got another husband. I gotta find out. I gotta find out. But my my wife's dad um, had a had a massive heart attack. He's in the hospital all on the same day of this hack, and I'm crushed. I'm crushed. So I get on live, and I tell the fans, and I tell all the supporters, and I tell all the community at B Stars guys, this is what's happening. Mm. I don't know what's going on. They're, they're, they're on Twitter screaming and yelling, saying, yeah. fuck Beat Stars. You guys are costing me money. You guys have been down for three days. You got, you they're thinking this. it's you. They're thinking that we're, we're fucking up. Something's yeah. wrong, right? And, um, and for I me can to, relate be, to that. be vulnerable, transparent, and just tell them what is really, really happening behind the scenes. I'm in tears, man. I'm in tears. That whole, and then we figured it out. We got, we figured it out. We got, we got into, um, we, we, you know, we, we, we got through it. And you know what's crazy also, that same day that was happening, it was like the, the worst day of the history of the company was the same day, that morning, Little Nas X purchased the beat for Old Town Get Road. the I fuck swear, out of here. I swear. Here. So I didn't even know. We didn't know that that song was going to end no, up being the, the biggest time, song. No, because purchasing the, that beat meant nothing. Nothing at that time. So yeah. the same day, it was the worst day of the history of the company, was also underlying that God, God was working. The greatest on, day. The greatest day of the history of the company. And- and um, we got through it and the community lifted us up and yeah. they supported us and they forgave us. And actually they supported us even more than I can ever imagine. Yeah. Um, companies don't do that. CEOs don't do that, you know? And CBS covered it and it was just like this event. It was this crazy e-commerce CEO goes on Periscope talking about, you know, and I, and I, and I saw you do it. Mm. And I saw you do it. And I saw you be vulnerable. I saw you be honest and transparent with your fans. And I don't want you to ever lose that. No. Don't ever lose that. No, no, Because no. what makes us imperfect is actually what makes us who we are. And including your people throughout the journey, they're going to love you and bless you forever for 100%. It. You know what I mean? And you know the crazy thing you say that is that um, the people who go on, say, TikTok and, mm -hmm. and you know, chastise me for giving them... Um, the wrong release date. There's like threads. I don't, I, I honestly never look through the toxic comments. Yeah. Yeah. I There's never, always going to be those people, but you know, I never do, but there was one time I did. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was reading through this comment section, um, on one of my leave me posts. Mm -hmm. And there's this one person and, and TikTok is such a different generation, mm -hmm. such sure. a different generation with a whole different approach to what they're entitled to. Mm -hmm. Right. But mm -hmm. there's one comment from someone saying like, Oh, we don't care. Uh, you gate kept this song from us for no reason. You never, you know, uh, for you, you, you ruined it for no reason, right? And then, and then several people came in, uh, piling on, right, going in, and there was this one, one person, who responded to every single comment, and explained wow. everything that I, I kind of wanted to say but wouldn't bring myself to say. And mm. I thought to myself, I don't give a damn what any of those other twenty people said, because that one person that was riding for me, that's a fan for life. That's someone who's going to show up and buy tickets and come see me when I come to San Diego or Atlanta or Charlotte. That's who I make my music for. Right. That's the person when I write these songs. Everybody else needs it. Even the people making the toxic comments, they still need the music. But the one that had my back, I got to focus on that fan. Mm -hmm. I got to focus on them. 100%. I can't I can't let my my vision become too uh, scatterbrained. Mm -hmm. I got to rock with the ones who are rocking with me. Everybody else can come sure. in time when they're meant to. Um, yeah. But I think because of the digital age, artists and independent artists, we focus on that critique because mm -hmm. it's so readily accessible and we can, and our ego gets so wrapped in it. Like, you know, you read those comments and you want to just tell them off and be like, well, fuck you, you don't understand. Right. But there's things we can't share. Mm -hmm. Why Leave Me took longer than I wanted it to. There's things I can't share. Even if yeah, I wanted to be sure. vulnerable, there's things I cannot say, mm -hmm. right? It just, it's no, it, one, it's nobody's business and two, it's not my business to share, mm -hmm. right? But I have to focus on the fans that instead of saying, you 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 blew it. You waited too long. You lost the hype. I have to focus on the fans that say, "I'm so glad you took the time with this song and dropped it when you did." Because when you dropped it was exactly when I was going through my divorce, and I needed it in that day, mm -hmm. and it saved me in that day. That fan. Yeah. That's the reason why the song took sure. forever. And the thousands of fans like that fan, not the hundreds, because because yeah. I wouldn't even call the critiques. Um, Fans. No. Those critics are not fans. No. Those are passerbys. Right. They see me on TikTok. They don't see me as a human. Mm -hmm. They see me as a as a pixel. Sure. So it's easy to shit on me. Mm -hmm. Right? It's easy to shit on somebody on social media because you don't see them 
three-dimensionally. You don't yeah. understand them as a human being with emotions and a personal life. And you don't know the reasons behind why they do or don't do the things they do. But the people who rock with you, just like the, the Beat Stars community that stayed with you and my fans mm-hmm. that stay with me, mm-hmm. those are the ones that take us to the promised land. And those are the ones that we always stick by because that's real community. That's not fanhood. That's community. Mm-hmm. Fans will, even the word fan, I hesitate to use. Yeah. Fans will come and go. Because mm-hmm. there's there's scales to fans. There's diehard fans. There's passive fans. Sure. There's you know, community is behind you at all times, and you are a part of the community. And yeah. I'm grateful to be a part of your community. Yeah. And I'm grateful to have you as sure. part of my community. Of and for all the fans that rock with both of us and stuck through us, mm-hmm. stuck with us through the tough times. Yeah. I mean, that's why we're here. Because behind the scenes, you're rocking with them, and you're building. Yes. You're building for them too. And and it, uh, yeah, you're, you're always gonna get a couple percent. Of you know the trolls, but you need it. Yeah, you, you you okay. Let's get into that then, because I think motivation. <laughs> yeah, motivation to prove the doubters wrong. Oh that, man, plays I a little lo- role. I love my doubters. Hey, come on now, I fucking love those people. <laughs> if they're not there, then what what what's left to prove? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If they need it, you, well, and I also think especially that, for longevity. Yes, like to keep going and going and going and going, um, and staying uncomfortable you know you need people that doubt you yes you and, I, and i also think that. like whether it's as a ceo mm-hmm. or as an artist or just as a creative in general if you if you're putting something into the world that there is not any feedback mm-hmm. there's no flack right there's no controversy whatsoever what are you really saying what are you doing what are you doing mm-hmm. yeah you know i mean because at that what point are you contributing maybe yeah maybe you maybe what you're doing is not necessary if if, if we all already understand it right yeah what problem are you solving what need are you addressing what what community are you serving i think True. inevitably when you put something of value of meaning into the world there will always be push and pull there will yeah. always be and you can't the key is you can't take it personal i don't take those yeah. those troll comments at you the troll i don't take you personal right. i don't take that personal it's not yeah. about me if someone comes into my comment section and drops something a little toxic mm-hmm. they're probably going through something and maybe in that moment, I am the mirror for their projection, and that's yeah. okay. Because even in that moment, I'm probably serving them more than the fan that's fucking with my song. Right. Because they needed me in that moment to work through something. They needed me in that moment to to process something, and that's okay. As an artist, you sign up for that. I signed up for that. Mm-hmm. I got to know what I signed up for. I signed up for feedback. I yeah, signed right. up for push and pull. Sure. I signed up for critics. The same way I signed up for love. The same way I signed up for roaring crowds. The same way I signed up for millions of streams. I signed up for the other shit, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, balance. And, yeah, for sure, for sure. You need, you need, um, you don't need a bunch of y- yes men no. saying you're beautiful all day long, twenty four seven. You, you know, you need, you need, you need critics. You need it. You need it. Um, I think going back, going back to like your content, and you know, I went back, I went back on Spotify. I mean, you only have like ten songs out. I think eight. Eight. Yeah. In three years, right? Yeah. And <laughs> you're sell- I'm not batting a big average right now. No, but you're selling out tours, right? You're yeah. Selling out shows. Isn't that um, crazy? And but it's amazing because there's more. There's the the, the purpose is larger than the quantity of of, of music. There's yes. there's there's each, and and I think that you know the life cycle of each song, which you've proven with within you know what you've done on TikTok, which is amazing, is like you will reintroduce the message, the song in different ways every single day yeah. um, for long periods of time because we live in this this world where attention is real ADD, man. That's we, the ocean I'm floating in, baby. Yeah. I have to. I have, have to be to. I have to know the waves. Yeah. Because it's not like it was before. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of older artists don't get that and they no. don't like that and they resent it. Yeah. But they got a choice. If they want to keep rocking in yeah. this industry or they want to let that boat sort of right. ride off into the sunset. I'm trying to keep sure. going. Sure. And I understand that there's a balance to be kept. It's not exactly what I've been doing. I wouldn't say eight songs in three years is the goal. It's not. No. I would say that I, and that's why I've got an album in the works. Mm-hmm. Um, my goal is actually to build a catalog that is expansive and creates worldwide impact, but also generational wealth and health for my family. Mm-hmm. That is my goal, right? But, um, in the process, you also have to understand that we don't live in the same music industry of 2009, 2015. Yeah. Singles are important right now. Mm-hmm. Singles are very important sure. right now. And sure. um, the commerce place for music right now promotes singles. Mm-hmm. The the social media space that feeds into the commerce place for music in even a higher degree promotes singles. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So what I'm doing is trying to release a body of work single at a time, I'm trying to have the best of both worlds. Yeah. But it's difficult because when you release a single like Sun and Moon, mm -hmm. right? I never could have envisioned what that song would ultimately do. Yeah, I put it out with the mindset of let's put this song out and then next month we'll drop another one mm -hmm. and then the next song. But right. but then you drop the song and it goes number one in the Philippines and you can't just drop another song the next day. It's mm -mm. not, you have to be a businessman yeah. as an artist. Sure. You have to remember, sure. we're trying to pay the creators right now. You know yeah, what I'm saying? I'm exactly. trying to I'm trying to get that song to its peak. Mm -hmm. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to steward that song to where it's meant to go. Yeah. And you also, when you're doing that, you have to listen to the world. Mm -hmm. I could have envisioned that song I could have had a goal and said that song is going to be top 50 on the U.S. charts, and that would have been a success. But instead, the world was like, no, nah, that song is going to be number one, but in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. I could have never anticipated that. Um, but because of that, you know, you, we had to spend many more months working that song, you know. Yeah. And I think some fans, or, or I don't know if they're fans, some people online mm. didn't appreciate that and don't appreciate that. Because mm. to them... It's put another song out. I want more music. I'm bored of this song. Me, me, me. I, I, I. But you I. still haven't touched people that haven't, you know, haven't experienced it Come on it now. Yet. Yeah. You Number still... one in the Philippines. We yeah. got 196 other started. countries, my boy. Exactly. We try to take this thing exactly. everywhere. Exactly. And as a businessman, I have to keep that in mind. I might piss off 5,000 people at the expense of gaining 500 million fans. Right. You know what I'm saying? And if those 5,000 people got to be pissed off for me to become, um, globally right. prominent um, and more important than me becoming globally prominent but for my music to have worldwide impact mm -hmm. I'm I'm more than happy enough to piss those people off yeah who sets the rules anyway like who sets the rules and we I, do yeah you guys decide and and you know and I've noticed that, like even with within the beat stars marketplace producers will have like a few tracks that just pop out yep right and maybe the rest of the catalog doesn't perform as well yeah but that one track they're going to eat off that track forever feed their bro. family for three four years forever yeah and they it's evergreen content and they keep reintroducing it and sometimes they'll re reintroduce it with different components like they'll add a hook on it and yeah. like okay cool add a hook on it or maybe they'll, they'll remix it to a different genre and they'll yeah. you know it's keep serving it if it's resonating and it's touching people and it you know that this is your home run song and you know there's still a and your music is very like broad can can, can you know it doesn't just fit in one lane it can not reach niche. yeah so it's not niche so you can you know the as that's another thing you know what the market size is you well, understand it you understand gotta, it but a lot of artists don't they no. think okay i'm just making this one hip-hop song and this trap song and i, I got limited amount of it's fans. About vision yeah it's about vision you got to see your songs yeah. or your beats mm -hmm. as plants right, right? And if you start watering that plant and uh, it starts growing bigger and quicker than you thought it would, mm -hmm. and then you realize, you have to realize not one month, not six months, not even one year, yeah. you got to think six years, 16 years, right. 60 years, okay? If this plant, if I keep watering it, can grow to be a 200-foot tree yeah. and harvest fruits that feed not just my family, but everybody around me, then I'm going to keep watering it. Yeah. And if somebody else who I never will know online who doesn't know me or anybody in my life mm -hmm. wants me to start watering another plant prematurely. Yeah. I don't care. Yep. I, I genuinely don't give a fuck. Like this is, this is me taking care of me and my own mm -hmm. so that I can serve the world. Have you ever thought about operating outside of the traditional way of how people consume music. So like when I, I dropped the song like two years ago, I didn't put it on Spotify for six months. I didn't put it on Spotify for six months. Where'd you put it? I put it on BeatStars. And, oh, I, yeah. I pro and, I, and I put a make an offer. I put a make an offer. Um, I took the Nipsey, you know, the, the Nipsey Hustle route. I said, make an offer on my music. It generated like $50,000. Hell yeah. You know how long it would have took me to generate like- Yeah, it would have taken a long time, bro. To generate that kind of stream. That's a lot of streams. You know what I'm saying? Have you ever thought about you know, as an entrepreneur, controlling your your pipeline, controlling your channels of distribution where, mm. okay, cool, my consumers, of course, I want, you, you know, you definitely want to make sure that 
you feed the places where people are consuming For music sure. and you give them you give them access to your music but your supporters your real like your real like family members that come to your shows that invest in your VIPs that invest in your your extra experiences that you do have you ever thought about creating and like creating a, a whole different mm. experience for them I, where where cuz cuz like for me I'm I'm a fan I love your music I don't want to just stream your music on Spotify. I want to. I want to continue to support you in your career. Mm. I want to give you thousand mm. dollars, and I've done that to artists, mm. and I do it all the time. But um, I think there's a lot of people like me, though. Yeah, I think because people sleep you, on people like you. Huh? I think people sleep on people. Yeah, like Yeah, because your music is, is more meaningful to someone like yeah. me. You know, it 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 means it means uh, it just means a lot more. It's not about the song. It's about the body. It's about mm. the vessel. It's about the person that is doing this selfless act mm. is sacrificing obsessively to give to give me music and my family and my children something to listen to and so now you're impacting you're impacting mm. what my daughter thinks what love is now you're impacting what my son my 12 year old son is 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 is, is we, we we created a, a point for them to understand how to treat a woman yeah you know when all we're hearing 24 7 is how we how we treat women shitty yeah. and how we don't respect our women. Yeah. And, um, and so, you know, and so for me, these, especially with R and B, you know, kind of not dying, it's coming back. Love music is coming back. And I'm happy that love music is coming back, but there was a long period of time where no one was talking about love, man. Mm. No one was appreciating women. Mm. No one was a, no one was, um, was just, understanding the, the the sanctity of of a beautiful relationship and how mm. you uphold it in front of your family in front of inside of your home it's hard to it's hard so to make to that me, a it's worth way. More, it's worth <laughs> more than just a a 0. 0.0001 cent of a stream I appreciate you know that, what i'm saying lady. you know what i'm saying but i, I know i that. know and i and, and and you know when when i saw you bring up that couple on stage to to where um gentleman proposed to his, yeah. his bro i was like every show you need to set up a sign up page on your Who fucking website. Who wants to get married today? Who wants to get married at the show? I need to just become an officiant, bro. Yes, you need to like put on put, put on, on the, that collar, my put boy. Put on that collar and start blessing people because it's a blessing, man. It's a blessing. Thank it's, you. The music means more than Thank just you. it's you know. And so I would love to see you start as you grow and as you continue to formulate your your business and your model. I would love to see you start dabbling into. Um, you know, controlling what your creation is worth to other mm. people because we, you shouldn't tell us what it's worth. We should tell you. Mm. We should tell Damn. you. We should tell you. And definitely not, definitely not the DSPs. No. Yeah. No, because, you know, we're, we can go, that's a dark, deep hole. <laughs> that's a dark, deep hole. No, but, but you're right. You're right. Yeah. And you know what? I appreciate you saying that yeah. because it's a spark to flame in me. And, I, and I've never, the reason why I haven't put much thought to it is because I, probably don't have an accurate gauge mm -hmm. on what other people value me at. Right. Right. Because right. you go so hard as an independent artist just trying to survive. And then when you get past the point of surviving, which I'm there mm -hmm. and you're doing well, um, you're constantly trying to scale and you're constantly trying to maneuver the industry as it is. But what you're saying, which is so powerful is what if you can maneuver the industry as you want it to be? Mm -hmm. What if you can, um, and especially as you want it to be with your community, Yeah, that's powerful sure. for the community to say, Hey, we are going to, so to speak, invest mm -hmm. based on what we value you at. Yeah. And I think not just myself, I think a lot of artists would be shocked to find shocked. out how, how highly their communities value you, value them. They'll be shocked. Yeah. Yeah. They'll and I, I think I would be shocked. And so mm -hmm. maybe when that time comes, yeah. You know, I'll have to um, take you out to a nice steak dinner. <laughs> no, 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 man, hell no. But but set up a website. Let yeah. people let people decide. Let people decide what they want to pay you. Give them an amazing experience. Yeah, you will be so surprised about what what your supporters will do for you. Um, you know, you're already doing it in in some for, form and fashion. You're already doing it, and um, it, it'd be amazing to see. You know, what bothers me the most, Denise, is that an artist like you that's touching millions of people. Millions of people, right, on Spotify and on TikTok. Sure, they're your followers, but you don't own that data. No. You can't remarket to them. I can't get to them. You can't really touch them as a business owner. How 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 frustrating. It's extremely frustrating, right? especially with Leave Me, right? I dropped the song six weeks ago. Yeah. This is the song that 
millions of people, literally yeah. millions of people clamored for, right. right? And for reasons outside of my control, I couldn't release it when they wanted it. Mm -hmm. And by the time I could release it, I had lost access to them. Yeah. So now this song is yeah. out and I can't get it to them. Yeah. It's so fucking frustrating. Frustrating. Because when you could just send an SMS bro, or an email if address it could just to, get everybody. to everybody that wanted it. Yeah. Right? Given there will always be a percentage of people yeah. that are like, nah, I liked it better on, on social media. That's cool. Yeah. I'm all right with right. that. But there are millions of people, literally millions, yeah. who just don't know the song is mm -hmm. out, who just invested in it at one point, but I don't have the I don't have the wherewithal within my mm -hmm. control to pay off their investment with the final product. Right. And that is bullshit. And, it, and, I, and I wish there was a way, and there are ways to sort of remediate. Mm -hmm. There are ways to, to um, procure data and manage data, and, but it's not, it's not where it needs to be. Yeah. And, it's, and it's never gonna be a full, accurate funnel of these are all mm -hmm. the people, and I shouldn't say it's never gonna be, yeah. but, but at present, there is not a way right. to tap into everybody who showed you love at one point when you were sharing those demos yep. and say, here's the final song. Right. And if I could, and when I can, mm -hmm. uh, I'll say when I can, that's when my music is truly gonna shake sure. the ground. Sure. Because we see it when I post. Mm -hmm. when, when I post, I see the visceral reaction. Yeah. Sometimes it just takes me a little longer to get the song where it needs to be um, and when I when I get to that point, right. sometimes I've lost I've lost the yeah. contact, yeah. and that's what sometimes those people don't need the final song. That's okay, but I'd love as an independent artist to at least have, have a the shot option. at it. Have a you shot. You know what I'm saying? Let me yeah. shoot my shot. Mm -hmm. Here, it's done. Right. Try it out. You don't right. like it? I, cool. Yeah. I would be doing the Beat Stars community a disservice if I didn't mention some of the producers that come you've, on, that shout them out. <laughs> that you've shout them out. These are my boys. <laughs> Um, oh, the ones I know of, right? Um, we got Tantu. Of course. We've got Seko. These, now, these two are like some of my best friends. Okay. And then we got Yondo. Yondo. Um, anyone else I'm missing? GC. That? GC. GC. Amazing producer, um, one of the top dogs on B-Stars. We could work through some more of them. Uh, we got... Um, uh, these are all good guys, by the all way. All good guys. <laughs> all good guys. I, I've, I've done uh, deals with Mixtape Soul. Makes tape soul amazing. Um, another top Sonder Sonics. Okay. Yeah, check them, check them out. They're fire. Okay. And then um, what we got in the room is he even here. We got Kevin Spears, who's my producer. He also. Uh, yeah, I want to talk about him because I think it's interesting what you're doing. Yeah. And a lot of artists have done this. Had, I've done this too. I've I've seen I've seen a lot of artists. They'll they'll discover a, a sound on yep. Beat Stars, and maybe it doesn't fully complete the full. That's picture. exactly what I want. Yeah. Where, as a as a as a as a as a like as a real polished recording artist, you're gonna incorporate some things in the arrangement, in the set, in, in the to. in the mix that make it more unique to you. you. Have to. And so you use you use these 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 beats as like a starting point, and then you incorporate your team, your production team, Kevin and 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 your band, and and you 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 customize it for you. And I wish more and more artists would do that. Yeah. I wish more and more artists would do that because. Um. Yeah, I don't know because sometimes the producer won't give you the full vision, right? They'll give no. you the they'll give you they'll give you a taste of it of what it could be and kind of set the emotion of it. But then there's another post production part yeah. of the song um, as an executive producer, and I've done it too, where I'll take some stems and I'll you know I don't maybe I don't like that baseline, yeah, or, or or make the baseline better, make the baseline better, make the baseline better, add a different melody, or yeah. maybe the top line is needs needs some work or. You know the drums. Uh, the drum sound sound selection maybe could be better, right? But this is the beauty of Beat Stars, yeah. right? Something for everyone. Mm -hmm. Some people, their musical uh, direction, their executive production taste, they want exactly what they found on Beat Stars. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Um, uh, mixtape Soul drops a beat. I'm rocking with it. It's exactly my vision. I'm writing to it. It's done. Put it out. Some people want to um, use the beat. And, and like you said, uh, improve it here, mm -hmm. change it here, take something out, push and pull. And some people, and this is where I, this is what, this is where my greatest joy has come through, through your platform. Some people don't see beat stars as a commerce place. Mm. Some people see beat stars as a, uh, community building tool. Mm. And for me, that's where I found my most success with what you've built. Right. Um, before I came on tour four days before I left 
for Vancouver. Seco and Tantu were in my basement. You know what I'm saying? They flew from the Netherlands after I've known them for four years to my house yeah. in between tours, Amazing. in between my, my summer tour and my fall tour. And this is the beauty, mm. right? Because now these guys who, um, who I've built this relationship with through BeatStars are more than just, it's not transactional anymore. Mm -hmm. it, it, we're still doing business, yep. but there's a relationship being upheld. And, um, you know, there's beats that I've, that I've purchased with them from their beat stars, but now I'm in the room with them. Mm -hmm. I'm not just getting necessarily, sometimes and I'm And you're comfortable already with their sound. So you're like, you're, oh, you're, you know. It's like they've almost, we've almost reverse osmosis, like built mm -hmm. my sound mm -hmm. through what we've been doing. Uh, like with Seco, like he made the beat for Slip and he made the beat for Sun and Moon mm -hmm. and he made the beat for what lovers do, right? So clearly Crazy. we have a, uh, a synergy yeah. between right, what clearly. he makes and what my brain wants, right? right? right. Uh, You're gravitating towards his sound. You're gravitating We've towards attracted it. each other right. from right. across the ocean. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that that pulled us into a, a basement where we are now making, um, you know, songs from scratch even it's together. number one songs now. Yeah. Well, he's changed my life. I've changed his it's, life. It's crazy. Kevin also got involved on those songs and helped yeah, produce them, sure. so it's changed his life. Yeah. Um, you know, Zach helped write these songs, so Virtually. it changed his life. So that everybody's life is being changed in one small way. And not just the people who who you're going to see in the credits. We're on tour right now, singing these songs to sold out crowds in different cities every night. Everybody that's involved, the fans, the band, everybody, everybody on the team, everybody in the management, everybody on the merchandising, everybody in the media. But this all starts with one origin point, right? And that's Seco just putting himself out there putting something into the beats yeah. into the beat stars world and me finding it and saying I could do something with this and that synergy and I told I told Seco this when we were hanging out in my basement because this is my first time meeting him well his, his real name is Wessel right mm -hmm. yep. and um, we were out to out to eat me him and Tentu um, uh, and it's like late at night and I I looked at him we're, we're at a, a gas station uh, it's called Sheets. I don't know if you've ever been. Mm -mm. We're sitting there. He's having his first quesadilla ever. He's loving it, right? <laughs> He's loving it. Ask ask I Wessel love, how he feels about the quesadillas. Love we'll him. see him next week. Oh, yeah. Get him a quesadilla. Don't tell him. Just bring one to him. And I looked at him. I said, you know how many lives you changed when you made that beat? You know what I'm saying? Do you know? And he told me a story. He said when he made the um, Sun and Moon beat, he said that he was just finished with school. He was so stressed out. He finished his final exam. And to come home to treat himself, he decided to just create something. Mm. Now, so many people to treat themselves, go get, you know, shit-faced, go uh, on vacation, yeah. go take a nap, go watch Netflix, lounge out. In his moment of exhaustion, he tapped into his creative higher self. Mm. And he completely transformed the course of my life, all of my fans' lives, all of my team's lives, everybody around me, my family, my, the, my family that's not even born yet, right? Because he decided after his test, he was going to tap into his higher self. And that's the power of creation. When you create, you change lives that you will never even see. You, the, 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 the magnetic, the, 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 the gravitational pull of your creative output is so much more powerful than you can fathom. He never in a million years would he have dreamed mm -hmm. when he came up with that chord progression, what it would do, right? And that's when you know it's so real because it wasn't planned. Not at all. No you know? script. It's not like you guys were in the studio, like let's force this collaboration. Nope. You know, and that's- man, But it that's, was. But he did yeah. make that for me. You did. I believe he for made sure. it for me. For sure. I believe he made it for me and I believe yeah. I wrote it for him and I believe that there was, I believe we were in the studio together from across the world. That's crazy. I genuinely believe that because I, I freestyled the chorus. Wow in the gas station parking lot, Costco, sitting there. Bro, you know how hard it is for me sometimes to like not work and just write write rhymes on beat stars. It's very all day difficult, like, bro. It's, it's so very hard. difficult. <laughs> you you live in a playground. Oh God. You're on I'm the so ultimate blessed. adult playground. So blessed. Like millions of tracks that are just uh canvases for just stories and stories, man. I just one of these days, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna. We need an album. Yeah, one of these. Come days. on, dog, <laughs> run it back for us. One of these days, my old ass will get back in the booth. There's no reason why you can't. Um, you know, 
manifestation. Yes. We're, we're putting it out there, right? Of course. I'm gonna come out with an album, but, but manifestation means something really, really important to you. And I, and I, even in your early days when no one was fucking following you yeah. on Twitter. Yeah. There was no one liking your tweets. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sitting there, oh, and he's so cute. He's he's <laughs> literally zero likes. Yes, maybe me. Like maybe I'm the only <laughs> I appreciate you, my man. Come on now, help me down. But and I like I loved um I loved that practice, that energy. And I teach it to my kids now. I teach it to my kids and I write we write down our goals. And we wake up every day and we write write down those three or four things that we're trying to achieve. Yeah. Okay, what are, what are what are those two or three things that we're going to do to get to that one thing today? Yeah. Even though that one thing may take six months, yeah. what what are what are one or two things attainable today yeah. that we can do? And um, for anyone to be successful, um, there there has to be some sort of like stake in the ground. There has to be a flag. There has yeah. to be a point that we're all working towards. Yeah. And um, some of the things that you've manifested on Twitter. When they finally happen, I just smile, bro. I'm like, oh my God, this dude. He's really, really um, taking advantage, taking advantage of what God has given you. Thank you. And um, you're, showing, you're showing what dedication and sacrifice can actually do in someone's life. And when people say, oh, this person's gonna change my life, this person's gonna change my life. And you're, when I point to you as you, in your story and you're, and you're in, in kind of like, when, as an example of success and independence, I'm like, yo, he changed his own life. He chose today Tell was gonna be it. the day I was gonna choose change my life. Um, where did that come from? We say manifestation a lot, mm -hmm. right? It's, a, it's like a big buzzword now. Yeah. Um, and I don't think a lot of people fully, understand, fully what understand what it means. What it means. You know what I'm saying? It's up for some people, it's like some people don't fuck with the word because it sounds like um it sounds too like ethereal. It's oh. like what what it, it's like an amorphous like like okay, you manifest, but what yeah. does that really mean? Yeah. I think when when you break it down and the way that manifestation has changed my life, it boils down to actually belief. Mm. Belief is the secret sauce of manifestation. Uh, primarily belief in yourself. Yeah. We don't have enough self-belief um, in, in our world. There's not enough self-belief. And I think that's because there's not enough uh, perception of self-worth. And How I, often are you thinking about the things you want to achieve? Oh, I never stop. Mm -hmm. I never stop. I, I got way too big of goals to stop thinking about this stuff. Um, but self-belief for me probably starts with my mom. You know, good mothers who instill self-belief mm -hmm. into their children create create superheroes, create unstoppable forces. I was rooted and, and steeped in an ecosystem uh, as a child where my mom and my dad empowered me to believe I could do anything, right? So when that is what your sponge brain as a child is absorbing, how could you not become who I am now? Mm. How could you, how could I not, how could I not speak and will these things into existence? As a child, when your brain is most formative, my brain was mm. structured in a way based on the love around me that I believed I could do anything. I was delusional as a child. Mm. I genuinely believed I, I could do anything, anything. Like I could be the best quarterback in the NFL. I could be the best uh, singer in the world. I could be the fastest dude on the planet. I could even if these things weren't true. Mm -hmm. Clearly they were not true. None of those things are true, but I believed they were true. And it's not about whether or not they were true. It's about the fact that my self-belief was unlimited. My self-belief was unbounded, un, 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 um, circumspect to anybody's opinions. Mm -hmm. So when you have that sort of self-belief, um, manifestation is easy yeah. because manifestation is just um, under, an understanding of I can do it and I'm going to talk about it and put it out there and work my ass off until it happens. Manifestation is not, I'm going to say it and it's going to magically pop into my life. No. Mm -hmm. Manifestation is a statement of immutable intent. I'm going to put it out there a million times boldly mm -hmm. because when I work my ass off for it, when, when I do that and it finally happens, it will have started with my, with my declaration of intent. Right. And that's, mm. I think you gotta people, be genuine. You gotta be genuine. It's not, it's not, it's not, we don't manifest. You can't just manifest some bullshit. It's just not a to, flex. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's not, that's just bullshit. That is just bullshit. But I think 
beyond self-belief, the other key component to, to uh, manifestation is belief in something greater than yourself. And this is the key. And Self- being open yes. to welcoming the unknown yes. of, of things that you never could have even imagined you can attain. Which comes with the belief in something greater than yourself. You have to believe in yourself unlimitedly. You also have to believe that there's something much greater than you. Because when I manifest that I'm going to um, have a number one song on the planet, right? Mm-hmm. I manifest that. Part of that is my self-belief that I know I can do that. And I don't give a damn what anybody thinks. I know I can do that, right? The other part is, for me, this is just me personally, a unbreakable belief in God, right? For me, God and my spiritual life is behind everything I do. And I personally believe that God has a plan for me that I can't understand and I'll never understand. But what he wills for me is what I'm meant to have. So I will speak my manifestation to the loudest volume and believe it to the deepest degree possible. And then whatever God makes of that manifestation is his will for me, yeah. right? And that, for me, those two things at the same time create heaven on earth. You know what I'm saying? Because I am living exactly what I'm meant to live. I speak it, I work my ass off for it, and then God takes care of the rest. And sometimes it means I don't get what I want. Thank God. And, in the, in the, and you know, in the Arab community, we sometimes we 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 tell our kids, don't don't tell everyone your dreams. <laughs> Some you know they'll they're gonna put the iron on you. Yeah, no, fuck right? that. Right, like they're fuck gonna, that. Right, um, don't don't share don't share all your dreams. Don't share all of them because people will curse it. Mm-hmm. Nah, people aren't incapable of that. You're yeah. cursing yourself when you think that right. way. We curse ourselves. That. The negative self-talk, people don't realize negative self-talk is so much deeper than just mm. than just uh, empty. It's sure. you're manifesting negativity I've into been, your life. Oh, I've been there. Yeah, we mm. all have. Mm-hmm. Me too. Mm. But that's the power of the human brain. That's the power of our consciousness. We can we we control the tipping points. Mm-hmm. We decide is today gonna be a beautiful day or the worst day of my life. Yeah. Right? Just like you said with Beat Stars. You know what I'm saying? Your belief in what you were doing. Tip that towards where you are now. I was delusional, just like you. I knew this was going to happen. Hell yeah. From day one. Hell yeah. I knew it. I knew some of the biggest songs in the world were going to be made on this platform. And and how many people believed in it? Nobody. Right. Did it matter? (laughs) Did not fucking matter. (laughs) Look where we are. Yeah. It was, uh, you know, I think you said something, I think you said something one one time where you're like, man, sometimes I I black out. I black out when I'm creating. I don't know. I don't know. It's a higher higher power sometimes. And when the first concept and the first kind of like purpose of beat stars i was blacking out i didn't know what i was doing it was like is someone else working in you me? were in flow state yeah for that's sure. flow state for sure that for sure. I, I think that the optimal human um creative process is flow state yeah when we're tapped into what we're meant to be doing for sure. you're there mm-hmm. it's beautiful yeah man some people don't wake up and have a purpose yeah i'm just blessed to wake up and have a purpose you, you're blessed to wake up and have a purpose um your sister layla i have to shout out layla shout out layla i love layla she sent me a live video one night. It was like, I don't know, 10, 11 p.m. And she texted me. She said, Abe, check your, check your Instagram DM. You got to see what's happening. I'm like, oh, God, what's going on now? And I go on your live, and I've never seen you this blushing red before. Right. You were nervous as hell. Yeah. And fucking Justin Bieber is singing every word <laughs> to your fucking song. And he's Shout dan- out Layla that in that moment, she said, I'm going a, I'm to a DM this to Abe. Yeah. She needed you to see it. Yeah, she needed me to see it because she knew how proud I would be. Yep, she knew how proud I would be, and and I'm seeing this Justin Bieber singing, singing, dancing, and singing every song, and you're sitting there blushing, nervous as fuck, and he's just like, "This moment is happening. Is yeah. this is this moment really yeah. happening? How did it feel, man, to have like one of the most global, iconic superstar pop artists singing your song, and then also." Just like how I said how your music, you know, how it relates to how I want my children to view their relationships and their, you know, he was, he loved that song because how, of what it, what meant, it meant to, to him. his, his girl, to what him and his girl. What it meant to him, 100%, yep. what it meant to them. Yep. True. Um, How'd that feel, man? I mean, it's like, it's like we've been saying, man, we always knew these things would happen. Yeah. We didn't know what would happen. Yeah. I didn't know Justin Bieber would embrace me in front of the world right. and per- and uplift me. Showcasing in front of all of his fans, his audience, never, everybody. Never in a million years would I have expected that. It was like 100,000 people in there, a couple hundred thousand. Close like- to it. It was like 70,000 at one point. Yeah. Um, never in a million years would I have expected it. But right. I think in those moments, mm-hmm. and this is very appropriate to the nature of right. mine and Justin's conversation, mm. you have to see God's hand in it. 
you have to see God's hand in it when you're being blessed. When, when that moment happens, you could chalk it up to so many things. Oh, it's just a fluke. Oh, it's a coincidence. Oh, somebody's behind this. You know how many exactly. people, you know how many people asked me, mm-hmm. how did it happen? How did it right. happen? How did it happen? Right. I don't care. I don't need to know. Mm-hmm. I don't need to know. Yeah. We, we, we like to explain away the magic in life sometimes. Yeah, for sure. Why? Someone paid. Someone did this. Yeah, someone did. Maybe they did. Maybe they did. And didn't. usually celebrities at that level. And they, remember, he, you're an uh, you're an independent artist. He has no he has they, no business wanting to promote. There's no incentive. Or sh- no, there's incentive no incentive whatsoever. No incentive for him to do that. Which is why I real. know yep. that it was God. Yep, for sure. There was a connection between Justin and myself, mm-hmm. which was the nature of our conversation. We talked about God, nature, yeah. marriage. We talked about the things that mean the most to us. Yeah. I genuinely believe I'm called to do this. I genuinely believe that there's no artist too big for me to connect with. There's no uh, audience too distant for me to reach. Uh, moments like that are just an affirmation of that. And shout out to Justin because being as as colossal as he is, being one of the most iconic artists of all time, he didn't see himself as too big to have that conversation with me. Yeah. When 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 the greatest uh, that there is humble their self and a humble artist is among the great god is at play yeah god is at play For sure. and that's the bond we had and you know we can become very successful in this music industry and start to businessify businessify everything mm-hmm. explain everything yeah. away no. i'm gonna just say it again for me it's god for me it's deeper for me it's something higher than myself i can work my ass off i can manifest i can be as talented as i am but for me to be doing the things i'm doing <laughs> you can't explain it without God. Beautiful, man. Um, for those that haven't heard the songs, I think we should get into Let's a listen. couple of these songs. Let's listen. Dante, can we play Sun and Moon produced by... Come on, produced by Seco and Kevin Spears, baby. Let's go. Uh, let's play it. Let's get into it. Mm. I'm happy every time I hear this song. <laughs> It's, it's that guitar. Yeah. Singing. I'll tell you something about the song that's gonna that's gonna that blew my mind. Seko explained it to me. So um I think it's during the verse, uh-huh. right? So it's he, not perfect. There's some imperfections yeah. on the actual. Yeah, and he was explaining that the coolest thing is that my verse, my verse structure, was a counter melody to the beat. Mm. And he said a lot of people would traditionally just ride the structure of the melody, you know. Um, so like right here, dun 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 dun. dun. I really love you. And that, I would do anything. Right. That, but instead, I created melody. a counter melody. And he said that that's what I'm most special at. And it fucking blew my mind. Because I didn't do that intentionally. It's not like, oh, I'm going to be creative here. No, it's just that's the pocket that I found. Mm. I found the space that I wanted to swim in. What's that? It's that? It sounds like an organ. Uh, I think it's a little synth. The little synth organ. Yeah. That, that, when that pops out. But that's what he was saying, that I could have rode that. Mm, you could have rode that part. Mm, and when everything drops out. Yeah, this is always on stage, the best part, because like it strips back a little bit, mm-hmm. and we're about to just sort of punch it into the final drive. Especially in today's music, where the vocal is not an instrument anymore. Mine you know? is. Yeah, <laughs> Mine is for sure, bro. 100%. Like, so many songs you hear on the radio, it's like the beat is so loud, so and prominent. the vocal's buried, and it's like no one wants to showcase the actual emotion. And that's why those songs are so popular. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> That's why that's why my songs and and you know what else I have a theory as well too is that we've been so used to like digitized sound with you know too much auto tune and too much like effects where your your vocal comes in so organic and so real it sounds like you're singing it in the room with me yeah and it reminds me of the days where you know when artists used to do that yeah you know? well, well it's funny because that's that was never my intention uh, consciously to use my voice as an instrument. Mm-hmm. But I think as a, as a songwriter, um, and that's my, my number one skill, my number one superpower, I just like what I add 
to the songs. Mm-hmm. I like what I add to the beats. I, I don't feel some of these songs are complete right. without what I'm going to add to yeah. them. Um, and it's funny, Janir, is Janir in here? No, I think Janir's outside. He was saying, my drummer, he was saying that like some of the times, like the way I deliver it is mm-hmm. like a drummer. Yeah. Like I, I bring this like sort of drum pattern exactly. to certain songs. Exactly. And then on other ones, uh, the other day we were driving in the car and I had this melody and two of the dudes in the car were like, yo, that should be horns. But mm. what they were hearing was just me vocalizing right. what the horns would do. Exactly. So, and the horns could accompany it, but I do think that I like, and here's the thing, I don't play guitar. I don't play drums. Mm-hmm. I don't play piano. But I I sort of You understand it though. I understand how to, how to arrange. Mm-hmm. Where it fits. And I use my voice yeah. to arrange. It's a simple beat. I mean it's a simple track. Super there's only simple. a couple of instruments. All my music is simple. Yeah. All my music is simple and there's no shame in that. Mm-hmm. Simp- I mean, less is more a lot of the times. For sure. There's um, beauty. There's beauty in the simplicity. Come on. And a lot of people, um, like you said, these really popular songs like that's a struggle for me because a lot of these really popular songs, the vocal is so subdued mm-hmm. and so almost uh, playing such a, such a, um, the vocal in some of these massively popular songs plays such a subtle, small role, mm-hmm. which is cool. No yeah. judgment. Yeah. But as a songwriter, I can't do that. Yeah. I can't do you, that. You have a message. The message can't yeah. be tucked mm-hmm. underneath. There's other music that's just, that's where the songwriting the, the lyrics don't matter as much, and that music rocks. For sure. It's not my for music. For sure, for sure. You know? The lyrics mean something. That's why my fans are here. And and we're hearing emotion in the vocal. You're you're being unapologetically you. You're not being afraid to throw in when emphatically when you feel something. Like, it doesn't have to always fucking be auto. Like It's not perfect. Like, yeah, it, it, no. I'm, ha- I'm glad it's yeah. not perfect. I, no. I love hearing some of the inflections that, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, and he's, he, he <laughs> ran with me. that. He ran That's with just that. That's me. Yeah, That's exactly. you. It makes you you. It's your signature. Yeah. That's beautiful. And I think that that um, that that bridges the gap between my humanity and my artistry because mm-hmm. I'm not perfect. For sure. Right? I mean, it's easy with all these knobs we can twist yep. and all these frequencies we can bend mm-hmm. to make something sound as perfect as yeah. possible. But you that's, know, that's not I true rem- to humanity. I, I, remember, I, I remember vividly you sending me some music. I think you texted it to me. This is stuff stuff wasn't even out yet. And you were just rapidly rap rapping. Oh, yeah, in the beginning? Yeah. It was, it was, it was, it was nauseating. <laughs> 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 you were rapidly rap rapping. And I'm like, and then, and then, um, and then I forget what song it was that really showed me your range. And I, I'm like, oh, shit, Anise can sing. Might have been Slip. Maybe Slip was the one that really just kind of like That was the first time where melody sort of became prominent for me. Slip, Slip's still my my favorite. That's your favorite? That's because you're OG. I love Slip. That's because you're OG. Real ones don't realize that Slip should have the 200 million streams. I wish Slip Slip can come out now. I I, I wish Slip. You know, honestly, but why can't it? Why can't I reintroduce it? Bring it to the that world? bitch out. Because, you know, I really, that song has what, like 12 million streams? And that's great. Yeah, it's great. 12 million is great. Yeah. But if I dropped that song, like you said, today, yeah. Yeah. it would fuck heads up and I it would so. and it would be on the charts. We'd be running it on, on the radio. It'd have 500. And guess what? It can and it will. Yeah. All I got to do is re release it. No rules. Remaster it. There's no do rules. Do something. Make a remix. Why Add not? another instrument to it. Do something to it. Like, yes. Just bring the slip. Uh, add a new verse to it. Yeah. Put, put a new verse to it. You yeah. Know? Dante, let's hear Slip, please. Come on now. <laughs> Give it to us, D. And this is also Seco. This is also Seco. And Kevin Spears. And also Kevin Spears. Dope. Dope. Am I supposed to talk during the song? You could, yeah, let's talk. Let's okay, talk. I didn't know if I was yeah, fucking up the vibes. We kind of we want to kind of break it down while we're listening to it, you know? So this is... Oh, the horns. Come on now, those horns are great. I can't remember if that was in the beat originally mm. or if that was Kevin's doing, Got it. but either way, excellent. So the interesting part about the beginning... Wait, you recorded this in the car? Yes. This is in the Ford Focus. In a Food Lion parking lot. No excuses. Fuck excuses. What I love about the song the most is the technicality in your flow, actually. It's a, it's a daring song. That's the one thing I'm going to give this song. Find me another song like Slip. Find me another song like this. You can't. In the build up. And I think that's why so many people fuck with it. Because it doesn't make sense. And some people don't like things to make sense. Mm. And it's extremely hard to perform. <laughs> all, all these artists that are just like, oh, I have to be in a big studio and I have to do this and I have to do this to get to get emotion or get my vocals out. Like, you are 
breaking all the rules, man. Rules don't exist. You know what I'm saying? Bro, I used to think I had to spend all that money. Then I thought I spent weeks buying foam panels and fitting out my closet and just this mic, that mic. Yeah. And guess what? I fucking hated singing in a closet. I like singing in my car. That's why I'm happy. That's why you hear the voices happy. Yeah. yeah, this song is really a fucking hit, man. To me, this is the one. I love Sun and Moon. Sun and Moon's short and sweet. It's it's awesome. Sun and Moon should be in commercials all over the yeah, world. Yeah, no, hundred percent. This one, this is this is the catalog item. This is yeah. the one I think that real fans. At the end of at the end of your career, this is gonna be the one that is number one. Yeah, I think so. Real fans will feel that way. Yeah. Which I love leading me to though. You know the thing about this song that I love too is I will always associate this song as the moment. Oh, you know, hey, that was the one that everyone tapped in. Come on now, yeah. how can you not like? You think back on this song and it's like that's that's when I made it. Mm. Now, of course, I could say I made it the moment I chose to pursue art. But this was you. This was This me. was the moment you... This, this was, was my you. arrival. Yeah, this was you. People understood who I was here, and they'll never they'll never stop understanding it. But on this song, um, everything changed, man. Everything changed. Shout out Justin. <laughs> Shout out Justin. Hell yeah. yeah. It's crazy. He tapped in when... when At slipped. this level, yeah. bro. Right. On this breathy ass. Mm. Yeah. Busy ass song. I love this busy ass song. This is the one. We started opening the shows with this song yeah. uh, in Aspen. We might do it. Should we do it tonight? Should we open the show with Slip? I, I wouldn't be mad at you. What y'all think? <laughs> it's, you know, it's, you know, some songs you just listen to, it was delivered perfectly. The production was perfect. The mix was perfect. Sonically, it, you could, it just massages your ears. There's nothing um, poking out that hurts, hurts, hurts your ear sonic. It's just one of those songs that you could just appreciate. That. It's like one, you know, like when people listen to lo-fi music or study music yeah. or like, re you know, music to relax to. It's like, for the vibes. You could just hear it a hundred times over and over. It doesn't get old. This is, this is, this is, this one does it for me, man. I, Congratulations. I, I appreciate that, man. And you know, the funny thing is we're on the same page. Yeah. A lot of times when fans ask me, what's your favorite song? Yeah. I tell them Slip. Because. Because mm -hmm. the artist in you. Bro, it was so daring to come out with that, like, like what is that, like 40 bars in the beginning? Yeah. You know? And it's not, it's not like catching, it's not like ear catching bars either. It's like really, you know, like spoken word almost mm -hmm. for a solid like 45 seconds. My daughter can rap the whole thing. I'm sure she can. I want to hear that. <laughs> for like a minute though. Like the hook doesn't even come in. And then when the hook does come in, there's like a confusing balance between the pre-chorus and the chorus. Yeah. It's like, which one is the hook? You know what I'm going to manifest right now? Let me hear it. It's got to resurge again? No. So Slip will have its own life. I already know it. We'll have another life. I already know that. Um, you will have songs that will just, in your catalog in the future, as long as you continue being open to welcoming the different energies, mm -hmm. um, you will have songs in your career where, where um, these songs may not even be the biggest in your, in your life. In your 2,000%. 2,000%. You're just getting started. Dude, I look you. That's that manifestation is fact, and I'll tell you what I, I was telling the guys the other day when we put together a set list for these shows. You want to be careful when you set it right. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, you don't want to give the 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 climax of the show too soon. So it's like we'll put Sun and Moon and leave me at the end. Like mm -hmm. maybe we'll put Slip right there with them. But I know for sure, within the next year, mm -hmm. that Slip, Sun and Moon, and Leave Me. Mm -hmm can all be third, fourth, seventh on a set list, right? I look at it like a baseball lineup, right? They don't have to be the home run hitters. Yeah. They're, they're hits. But when I go watch some of my favorite artists, some of my favorite songs are the third one they play at the show. Yeah. And I've seen beautiful. I've seen thousands of artists perform. And this is your, four, your first tour. And I recommend everyone out there listening you have to go see this guy Come through. on stage. Come through. Because he's putting on a show with him and his squad that is like a polished, seasoned veteran in the game. And I told you when I told you in DC, I said, I've, I've seen I've seen legends not put together sets Thank like you, this bro. and performances like this, engaging engaging shows like this. Um, congratulations on all your success, Anise. It's been like, this is like one, for me, one of the moments in my life that I've been waiting for to happen because um, 
you are a testament. You're a testament to the things that I've put in put in motion many, many years ago. Manifested and, this. Mm-hmm. And um, you're an example, a great example, great role model. And continue on your journey, my brother. brother. I love you. Love you too, man. And um, I'm gonna see you tonight at the show. Hell yeah! And um, where where can where can everyone find you? Where can everyone find you? Um, everywhere as Anis A N E E S A N E E S. You can find me on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, Spotify, Apple, anywhere. That's just me, my name. Uh, come through, kick it with me online. We do things like we do here, communal. You know what I'm saying? If you want a community of good vibes, love, manifestation, um, and just pure energy, come kick it with me. You know, I'll see y'all then. Appreciate it, man. Thank you for coming through, my love brother. You, dog. Yes, sir. I'll never forget that 2018 phone call. You stayed on the phone with me for two hours. Yeah. And I appreciate that to this day. Of course. Love of you. Of course, man. Love you too, man. Of course.